All right. Good to well, see you. Likewise, how are you? All good. All good. I see a Springsteen shirt there. Yeah, from the yeah. from uh this year. It was the year of concerts for me. I did uh I did John Mayer, I did Springsteen twice, and then I uh I paid a mortgage to go to Taylor Swift. So right. you know, I saw I saw Bruce twice for cheaper, let's just say that. And I had good right. Oh good, good, good. Uh, yeah. So uh so yeah, last time we spoke, you were, you know, making one of your films about the gods, and now you've moved on to mere mortals like 80s action heroes. Yes. Uh, it is it obviously something about these figures compels you, but when you decide you're gonna do this, how do you sort of begin the process? Because obviously with Springsteen, you have a little bit of a relationship now that if you have an idea, you can kind of go directly and go, I got an idea, and he'll be like, All right, go ahead. And then you're you know you're off to the races. But here you, you kind of have to start a little bit from scratch and then anything can sort of happen while while you're making it because you're you know you're you're trying to spend the time with them so I'm, I'm curious how do you sort of gird yourself for that process i mean there's no real um answer to how do, how do you stumble into the world of sylvester stallone and 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 tell that story but i i went to his house and that was a, an important moment for me because like going to his house and meeting him I went into his office yeah. and in his office was uh, a lot of memorabilia and a lot of imagery from all his films. And one of the things I did learn from making films with Bruce is that you embrace what the gods throw at you. And oh. right then and there, I realized I had a set. This office is everything I want because when I was talking with Sly, he was bouncing around the room. He was picking up things. He was talking about one subject, jumping to another. And I realized that's the film I want to make right now. What's happening before me, that's what I want to capture. So I knew I was not going to sit him down in a chair, put him in front of a crew. I wanted it free form. I wanted to Sly have the rhythm, the pacing of that initial meet. And for me, I could, you know, you could prepare for all this, but you have to be open. So stepping into the, the Sylvester Stallone doc, I relied on just the idea of keeping my eyes open and seeing what the gods are throwing me. And one of the things too, that besides the room, I realized that he was moving and that itself was a theme that I, I could use. So there's preparation, but the key to it is looking at your environment and saying, that works that's yeah. that's something that could be used and <clears throat> and like on the one hand it's i don't think many people would think to put him in his office because you you know obviously the the talking head kind of idea is whatever but i think people would try to like frame it like oh let's take him to like a ring you know they'll start to overthink it and i think it fits really well because one you're kind of letting him tell his story so let him be comfortable and two i think even you know, people who are aware of the story don't really realize <clears throat> the sort of come from nothing element of it of, sure, look around, he's done well. But like, there is some degree of like, yeah, but I was hungry once, like literally hungry, like I want to go eat a meal. And <clears throat> it shows up in the work a lot. But also letting him kind of sit in in what it's earned while kind of reflecting on it, it gives more personality, and I think makes you associate with him more than I think a, a drier documentary would because let's face it, I don't have the money he does. I don't have the success he does. It's easy to be like, oh fuck you. Like it right. doesn't work if you have if you if you're antagonistic to him, the documentary won't work. Well, I think I think the beauty of seeing Sly in his office is that you get two things. You get the power of of his history by all the imagery behind him, but you get a man sitting at a desk um listening to a cassette. Yeah. of his youthful voice where he laughs at himself and he challenges himself. You get a man who confesses to, you know, a, a traumatic and troubled childhood yeah. amongst luxury, a, a, a beautiful bookcase of awards and history and film. So having those two things play as forces within the frame are a great thing because what is happening is you're recognizing the iconic figure you made of, might have grown up with but he's giving you um, a side that is truthful and revealing. 
right within that kind of composition, you've got two things going on with the brain where, you know, you're, you see a Rocky statue in the back and then you see this man who's completely vulnerable in front of the camera. So I, I would love to say that a lot of that was planned, but a lot of it is the beauty of just happening in the moment and getting out of the way. I mean, we'll let you take credit for it anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but no, like, I mean, over the years, you, you would, you would hear very similar things about productions like, Oh, he would, you know, kind of want to do the movie that he sees in his head. And then maybe the director didn't see the same movie. And, and it makes more sense. The more you kind of look at the career of like, well, this is a guy who was always somewhere in the back of his mind worried, like the work could dry up. Like I could be back on the streets. Like this has to work. Like I'm here, you know, even if it's a, the, the silliest of the silly movies, like I'm here because I, I think I can do this and I think I can do a good job. And do they all work out? No, but I want to do a good job. You never got the sense of like, even in the ones where he kind of looks like, oh God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like I'm trying, like I'm going to make the best of this. And I like that he frames a lot of things through, through almost failure, which is a sort of staggering thing to think about when, you know, your movie won best picture, like you've got multiple franchises. It's literally ending on, you created a whole new one, but there is still this like, but I like that so much of him is the but aspect, which is highly relate relatable. <laughs> It, no, it's 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 amazing to see how he has used um, the success at times to further the conversation with himself on what do I want to do? What do I want? You know, like by time you get to the Expendables, he's at a place of saying, OK, I'm, 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 I'm not seen in the world as valuable anymore. How do I use that and put a spin on it as an asset? It was the same thing with Rocky. It, you trace back that that's been to Rocky where he's deemed uncastable, but he takes those qualities and, and writes a world yeah. where he is the soul, um, you know, where, where, where he is the character that you're, you're tapping into who can find a place in the world, uh, find a place in the world where he goes beyond just being a prize fighter. He's accepted, he's loved. So Sly is always working um with his writing to to create a universe that gives him i think a feeling of hope sure. and mentorship and support and i think those were things that i needed to unpack in the film um because his his childhood was so intense his relationship with his dad was so intense i had to tell you that story to understand rocky differently to understand rambo differently those franchises that you might have experienced just on the action level or good story make, you know good storytelling or filmmaking so the goal is to like step into the stallone world so that the casual fan can feel one thing the uber fan can learn more yeah. And at the same time, it's a universal story where everyone can feel part of themselves in that journey of overcoming whatever is the adversity is holding them back. Yeah. And and I mean, I love that you include the that bit of Tarantino being like, wait, this is the guy who's the next great actor? Like, I saw him in something. Wait, this is the guy? And that's sort of always been the case. I mean, even going towards, like, my favorite performance of his is, is Copland. And, like, it's so funny that even in the film, it's kind of, it's it's sort of shown as here's this great work that everyone didn't give a chance to because like, wait, Stallone's making a drama? Like he's gunning for awards? Like, you know, that movie comes out today if he was the proper age. That's a, a, a huge awards thing because it's, what a story. But at that point, it was, oh, what a story that would be. It was kind of dismissed. And, and it's wild when you look at one who's in that, who made it. Like that movie, I'm sure you watched all of these as you were getting ready. Like, just in terms of like losing yourself in the movie, like that's one, that's just such a good movie. Copland is a fantastic example of how far Sly was willing to push himself as the actor, but also to dismantle an 80s action figure. Like yeah. I, there's an edit I made in the doc. I cut this film and it, I cross cut in Copland Sly walking um, older in Copland with the imagery of Rambo holding the machine gun and just to show the physicality of how he took on this character and the differences in, in both those performances. Like the beauty of Copland too, is that in the interview that I was doing with him, he reenacts a scene. Yeah. 
and and he has such happiness that he was able to have that moment with De Niro. It comes across, but also he goes to the truthful place and says it wasn't enough. Yeah, and the, the film didn't make it, and that's Sly in a nutshell. Where he he in the in these interviews gave me this great thing, which is time and 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 trust, yeah. like time to unpack a scene, like described in Copland, to time to unpack his process in making it, but also the trust to say, you know what, I didn't, it, I didn't make it after Copland. I wasn't seen differently. Which that mishapping is classic for him. Oh yeah, which is funny because that's one of those ones where it's it's not him. He did nothing wrong. Right. The industry didn't support it in the way, but for him, it's like, but it, the end result was the same. I didn't get offered that role again. And it's wild watching that because, you know, in 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 Rocky, he's seen as smaller than Apollo and other and many of the guys he goes up against. But he's always he's a large human being, and he towers over every single person in that movie. But everyone is taller than him in a way. Like he's you know he's standing up against these like these guys who are on the West Wing. Like you know they were not like yeah. tough guys, but they're bullying him around. And the totally it's such a thing that I think a lot of the people of that era wouldn't have allowed. It just wouldn't be in their DNA. Like, I, I can't let someone do that to me. And he was, please, let's do that. Yeah, he was, you know, in Copland, he was really open to challenging everything that he built up at that point. And, and one of the things that didn't end up in the film, but it was a detail that I loved, was that he carried a turtle in his pocket to remind himself of the, the character, the way the character would walk yeah. slow. And, and that's, that, 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 that just gave me an example of like his dedication to character and 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 how deep he went into these films. For sure. Um, added bonus that there's some Springsteen music in that movie, but that's that's more for yeah. us. Um, yeah. Is there when you're when you're talking about editing it? Obviously, all documentaries start out massively long, and you're like, I, how is this ever going to work? When you're sort of figuring out the films that tell the story, is there one that you left out that you would have really liked to have in? Because as you're going through them, I'm sure you're like reevaluating so many of them and going, oh, wait, I can't, I hated this movie as a kid. And like, this is great. Or, or this one maybe is more of its time. And I'm sure he's honest about all that. So as you're kind of building them, you you kind of know the obvious ones, but when you're, you're filling in the blanks in a way, how do you choose which ones go in and which ones stay out? Well, when you're looking at the body of work and of like a Sylvester Stallone, you, you, you carry along your childhood memories of what you've connected to. But also in the editing process, you suddenly discover details and themes that the film itself guides you. When you get to the place of Fist, um, it was less about the conflict. Uh, it was less about some of the conflicts in making it, but the idea of Sly wanting hope and not being happy with the ending. That became a new thing to hold on to very different than the my experience of watching fist and, and what i thought about it. so you 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 listen to the film because it becomes this person in your life and when i was cutting this film i um worked with a great co-producer uh adrian gerard who uh would dive deep in with the archive dive deep into the films and and you you get this conversation this dialogue um where you start to live the movie and the movie will tell you what to stay on, what to, 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 to leave behind. And sometimes you have to leave behind gems because they just don't drive the narrative a certain way. Um, and there, you know, Paradise Alley could be its own little documentary, right. how he made it, what it was about, what he was trying to do. But um, you find a balance where you consciously and unconsciously chase themes yeah. that lead up to a feeling of a whole person or a being and that's your goal i'm that sure when you're yeah. and i'm and i'm sure talking to him you can sometimes tell like you have less to say about this movie than that movie you're kind of leading me in that way so maybe we're not going to talk about staying alive for six hours or whatever the right. you know right. the is. but even though i feel like pretty much everything had to be like yeah let's let's do it otherwise this wouldn't have happened but like absolutely there's no there was nothing that he told me to hold back on and and films like staying alive i i had all sessions about yeah. but i found that in the balance of things the other films were 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 explaining a part that i was more interested in and and that's sly sly you know the the thing about staying alive was interesting was that he's not in it exactly and he, and he put himself through 
the 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 uh, intensity of directing it. Yeah. But he, in preparing for the Rocky film, he kind of put John Travolta through those paces, yeah. where he physically changed him, and 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 so the theme of how he physically would represent himself with these characters that became more important than the isolated film staying alive. Oh yeah. Well, that's, you know, you, you watch also I, just as you're learning more about him, I think you want things where he's on screen because he's changing physically. He's, Absolutely. his interests are changing. You know, like I, when I was at Toronto, they had the, some of his, uh, his private collection of the artwork and, you know, you, you look at it and that's, that's a thing that most people probably wouldn't want to share for good or for bad, whether you like it or you don't like it. It's still, it's like, I'm doing this because I need to express something. And this is something I, I want to do in my free time. He wasn't commissioned to make an artwork. He was sitting there doing it because this is what I feel like I have to say. And you, it does feel like you're getting to, to look inside in a way that I feel like Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis and kind of, they, they, they weren't really, not necessarily even interested in, but it just never presented themselves in that way. They they went off in different directions and found, in a way, I think maybe more fulfillment than he did. It always felt like he was like, I'm one away from something. But the something, right. I mean, the right. doctor kind of suggests it's probably dad saying good job, but, you know, the movies have to do that instead. Yeah, and and, and I, I love chasing characters who have that lost father connection and 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 a lot of my films have landed in that wheelhouse and when i look at sly by the end of this doc you 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 see the full journey of his father and how it 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 has shaped him but also inspired him to create and and you know there's a great thing where he talks about in stallone world anything is possible sure. a, a a boxer can become a champion um a vet can come home and find home and peace you know, the idea of Stallone world really stuck with me because the films were a vehicle of redemption and healing. And I sh could no longer look at these films on a simple level. They were all reflections of his life. And what I hope with the doc is that the, the awareness of his writing and his filmmaking um, takes on a new level because the body of work is so powerful. And and I love that he just challenges himself all the time down to the paintings. The paintings are these iconic images of him spray painted over and destroyed. And you know, he's literally tearing down the wall of the icon. So Sly, the artist, is fascinating to me. He's a Renaissance man. I'm so grateful that he gave me the time and the trust. Um, and and what, what I find is that Sly is the same guy that is in those 1977 interviews. He's he's learned a lot and he's definitely done the work, yeah. but the drive and ambition is there. And that need to figure out and get approval and, and, and all the other things that come along with an intense childhood are still there. Oh yeah. Um, as we wrap one, congratulations, but two, like as just sort of the last thing, has he seen it? Um, Sly has not only seen it, I showed it to him two times in the rough cut stage, and then I shared it with him and his family in Toronto, and I sat next to him, and it was an amazing experience. For me as a filmmaker, when you're in a dark edit room, yeah. those are the kind of things you dream of, like, maybe this will be in a festival, maybe one day but I'll sit next to Sly, experience it with him. So I was really grateful for the Toronto Film Festival for picking it, but also to have that experience with thousands, you know, a couple a couple thousand people it was just amazing to see it projected and to see sly's life unfold and to be next to the man it was a great honor amazing well congratulations again and thank you for doing this and I'm, yeah I'm, good to see yeah. you oh likewise this is this is great so you should be very proud of this one thank you man thank oh, you Look forward to see, see you at a brew show huh uh yeah let's do it all right man